Okay, so um, in this part of lecture, we'll discuss some complications related to atherosclerosis. So again, uh, we talked about how you can have calcification of atherosclerotic plaque leading to significant lesions. Um, you know, it's also important to note that even though there may be a thickened cap around the vessel, like uh, plaque formation and atheromas, like um, cause the vessel to be weaker, um, which can lead to hemorrhage. Um, can lead to rupture of the vessel wall, formation of aneurysms. Um, you can have again the thromboembolytic events um, as well. Where you know we know of our you know heart attacks um, or acute coronary syndrome MI, uh, VT or venothromboembolytic event um, or strokes. Okay, um, so there's quite a few things that different can happen uh, related to atherosclerosis, and again depending on um, you know the morphology of the lesion or complication um, you know you can have different things uh, manifest you know again uh, probably the most common acute event is going to be that uh, thromboembolytic event um, again which we could see with myocardial ischemia stroke um, however if we have significant lesions um, we can see you know limb claudication we can see um, you know, unstable angina or ischemia um, during exercise. And you can even see effects on the renal arteries. Again, like when we develop atherosclerosis, when we develop cardiovascular disease, we don't just develop it in one um, arterial uh, system. Okay, so next we'll dive into atherosclerotic heart disease specifically. So atherosclerotic heart disease, also known as coronary artery disease, or ischemic heart disease, a condition where we basically have an imbalance with thing, between things that increase uh, myocardial demand um, and uh, decrease myocardial supply. So then we have a supply demand um, imbalance. And here are some examples of things that will increase uh, myocardial oxygen su su uh, supply or things that affect it, oxygen content, coronary blood flow, perfusion pressure, and things that affect uh, myocardial oxygen demand. So again, uh, wall stress, which is a, a combination of factors of ventricular pressure, ventricular radius, and ventricular wall thickness. Okay, so some structural properties of the heart, uh, contractility, and heart rates. Probably one we uh, most notable that we we can think of uh, clinically, and assess clinically. Um, you know, again, there's some hereditary factors that tie into uh, heart disease. So, um, you know, genetic factors. We know that. Uh, age plays a role here, but they're also, um, even emotional um, things can, can contribute to this. And likewise, cardiovascular disease can also contribute to uh, depression and other issues. So um, this, this graph here really describes how so many of these factors like play into each other, but they can also lead, um, like kind of back up into this loop, um, which demonstrates again, like, you know, makes it complicated as a determinant what's exactly a causative factor, but it also demonstrates that if we don't address some of these factors, they can further potentiate and lead to even worsening complications um, or clinical status. Uh, so some heart disease facts. So about uh, <clears throat> 600,000 Americans die from heart disease every year. That's about one in every four deaths. Um, in the United States, someone has a heart attack every 43 seconds. I actually saw this updated to be even less uh, than that. So, um, you know, each and in each minute in the United States, someone dies from a heart attack in the United States. So again, this is still a big problem. We've gotten better at treating it with medications and other interventions, but it still remains to, uh, again, be our top cause of mortality, heart disease, okay? Um, and again, you know, you're more likely to see um, so as a causative factor for mortality or these acute events is going to be this rupture of these unstable plaques creating a, a venothromboembolytic event, right? Very, I mean, you're, you're probably not going to see the vessel ever 100% sclerose. So in very rare instances. Um, and even then, up, even up to 99% uh, occlusion, sometimes patients can have very marginal symptoms. Um, we have a total occlusion from a... From a, a a thrombus, you know, that's when we start having serious issues. Um, and again, this just speaks to um, that we've gotten better at managing uh, cardiovascular disease, um, but you know, uh, we it still remains a, a pressing issue here um, in this country. I'm trying to move my. Here we go. Still remains a pressing issue here.